Oh, yeah. We are the best on my end. This is making the nervous. Why? You don't have to do anything. We're sleeping. I'm the one with the best. Yeah, all the rest of you bring it along. I'm going to say something stupid. Make you do me. Anyone should try to forget the blonde hair. Hey. Okay, so we have talked about the events that led up to the Civil War. And now we're going to actually get into the fighting. We're still going to watch things about Ken Burns' Civil War today. Tomorrow I'm, I'm here, but I'm not here. I'm setting up the High Ability Showcase. So um, you are just going to watch the whole period, just parts of Ken Burns' Civil War. Whoever the sub will be, whoever that is, is hopefully just going to hit play and just watch it. I think Miss Burden is here today in the building, so I'm actually going to find her and ask her. She's, she's, she's so the, cool. She's the best sub. She is. Um, all right, so, and I've got to make sure that I have my right sheets because there is so much information about the Civil War, and I've, I've talked about this, that I really like, I have, this is my script that I have to stick to, but there were so many different things that I wanted to talk about that I kept just writing over all of my books. And I was like, wait, they need to know this, so this is cool. Um, Can I just have a copy of those? Oh, yeah. Yes, it's right in front of you. No, like, no, like, copy it. No. Like, I'll go copy it. Oh, it's, not it's, not, it's, just, it's not cheating. It's not cheating. What if I stole him? Then that would be the agreement. Would you kick her out? Sure. Oh, you're in, no, you wouldn't. You're in Mr. Williams' class. For the last year. With, <laughs> with, well, Ethan's in the school craft, and then who else loves up this class? Ian. 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 He's in school Ian. craft. He's in school craft. I don't think so Williams does have a class. All right, bug. Well, look as good on you. I heard that they've already, like, shot. They're not even, like, with half. No, they're not even to events towards the war. It's okay. It's like new, it's a new teacher. It's fine. You just learn how to teach the first year, first couple of years. So, all right. So we're looking at the two sides, the North versus South, and I'm going to use different words, synonyms for the North and the South. So we're going to talk about those, but you should be expected to know that the North is the Union, and they're also called the Yankees. Yeah, Billy, yeah. Billy Yank, whereas the South is the Confederates, but they're also the what? The rebels. the rebels. And we'll talk about um, blue versus gray. The north is blue and the south is gray. So you should Why? you should know the uniforms. color of the uniforms. As you'll see next week. Week after that. We come in just up. Alright, so Oh my gosh, Emma. He's just like he does every year. I've never been able to see it. I'm actually I have you I was dressed up in the class that day in your seventh cl grade class. You're a liar. <laughs> no, like, I've never seen you. Yeah, but you've seen how he's dressed up. Yeah, but you've seen the color of the uniform. Wait, so you only dress up one of them? Yeah, I mean, I never dress up in the South because I'm not a loser. Racism. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, because of racism. Yes, also because of that. So, there you go. So, on, it's a little bit different. We're going to start off talking about the border state. What is a border state? That's important. What is it? What is it, Brandon? It's a state that still has slavery but didn't secede. Yeah, a state that didn't secede, that still has slavery. So you have Delaware, Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri are going to be slave states. We struggle to figure out whether to, to side with the North or the South. Lincoln is going to work hard to keep them in the Union. Uh, out of those, what's the most important one? Trista? Maryland. Why is Maryland the most important border state? It would yeah. be in the south. Okay. The, the Washington, D.C., the capital of the north, would be in the south. So if Maryland seceded, would then, like, would the, the so, so let's just say Maryland secedes, south takes D.C. Well, it's not, that's not a supposable case because they do try, and Abraham Lincoln just goes in there with the army and says, let's arrest that person, that person, without, like, telling you. Like why they're arresting you, okay. and so they like he arrests the mayor of Baltimore, he arrests the governor of Maryland, he just he arrests all these people that were like, yes, let's secede because slavery and states' rights and all this, all these can events. I, can I like continue what I was saying? Though? Well, not really, because if it's like you know, what would happen? Well, it would immediately just 
in the British Union Army would just invade Maryland, which they did anyway, and, and they would take it over. How do you spell secession? No, to break away. Like from the whole United States. Yes. It's like to, cre to create the South, the Confederate States so, of America. So, clearly, so America. Sort of. Not, not legitly. 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 I thought legitly was a word. <laughs> no, it's like big. Got it. That's, that's the word. That's the word Donald Trump likes to say. Big, 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 like an episode of Oprah, but except yeah. for prizes, you get jail time. <laughs> yeah. Which is illegal, and there's a British law that Americans, we still use, that prevents any, like, the mayor or the governor from just going around and saying, hey, you're going to jail, we're not telling you. It's called habeas corpus. Basically, you have to be told why right. you're going to prison. Well, Trish is going to prison because she said none. Bye, Adios, amigo. Bye, Was the Miranda Rose? No, nothing yet. That's, I mean, that's only a recent thing, like nineteen seventies. So, uh, okay. So, comparing the North and the South, North has a larger population, more industry, more trains and railroads. That's going to be helpful for them in the war. Whereas the South has excellent leaders. They have a motivation to fight, and they have home field advantage. We mentioned those yesterday. Motivation to fight. What happens when they lose? If they lose, Brandon. They get deslaved. Yeah, they're deslaved, which is a good thing. You know, for America, uh, but American. for them, that's why it's one of the reasons they're fighting states' rights to, to have slavery. And so most of the fighting as well is going to happen on their their own territory. And so they, they know the land, they know the mountains, they know like the, the, the roads to travel on armies. They're, they're, the farmers around them are going to give them food to feed their army, and so this is going to be a huge benefit for them. And excellent leader, like we've already talked about, Robert E. Lee. What? Haven't they used their slaves? Like well, if you arm a bunch of slaves, what are those slaves really going to do with all their newfound guns? Uh, you can shoot the owner. You can shoot the owner. So what did they do with them? Uh, kept them on the plantation. So well, we'll talk about that. If you had 20 or more slaves, you didn't have to go fight. Yeah, it's unfair. Like People are mad. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk more about that. It was a poor man's or a, yeah, a poor man's fight, a rich man's war. So the rich people started the war. The poor people end up fighting. All right. So the North Union, same thing. Their goals and strategies are to restore the Union by invading the South. Original goal was to not end slavery, but just preserve the Union. So the Union again is the United States. We use that interchangeable word, but you don't know. We're talking about the union. It's just like when two people get married, they form a union. They form a union. Yeah. They form a union. I don't think the union was. All right, the South. We're going to talk about that here in a second. The South sought to become an independent country and basically secure slavery to make sure that it's um, going to always be around. Like the Confederates create their own constitutions. They have the Confederate Constitution of America. It's identical to the U.S. Constitution. Like, identical, except for the phrase about always having slavery. Like it, it, I mean, they, they were not very original. I mean, because the Constitution is awesome. Alright, the Confederate strategies, well, the Union strategy, eventually we're going to, I don't know why these slides are out of order, so I'm going to go and skip this for now. So we're going to skip the first blank and go down to the second blank. Do a little out of order. Union strategy, blockade the South to cut off supplies. And they're going to use a plan that's gained control of the Mississippi River. What's the name of that plan? It's Scott's Great Snake Plan, but what's the name of that snake, Aaron? Anaconda. Yeah, the Anaconda Plan. Whoa, where'd you find that at? In the reading. I just realized that the slides are the same thing on here. Whoa. It's like I want you to do really well on the deck. No. I was like typing them all up. Where is it? I don't. Why do I not see it? It's right here. It's on page 450. So just like an anaconda, which when they capture their prey, 
they slowly wrap around its prey and slowly squeeze the life out of it until it's dead, until its eyes pop out of its oh. skull and its head pops off. Oh, that's well, does that really happen? Yeah. yeah. Like pressure from the it's gotta go somewhere. Those organs have gotta go somewhere, and it's gonna so go. Then did you oh, just, like, it's gonna make a great your... YouTube video. Okay. Wait, does it like spray out of your head, or does your head just like fall off? You know what? It's been a while since I've seen it, so. I think this video is gonna be I mean, I've seen the movie in <laughs> Conda. Is that a movie? Yeah. I think they played that song. Like Jaws. All right, so in this plan, look at the snake. They're going to blockade. So they're going to send the U.S. Navy all along the Gulf of Mexico and eventually troops. So just like an anaconda, they are going to squeeze the economic life out of the South. Correct. No, I mean, that's, that's the plan. It's, I mean, it's a brilliant plan because, spoilers, it works. Like the South, <laughs> I mean, the South was, spoilers. the South it has to export its main product. What's the major product that the slaves are, are making Cotton. or picking? Cotton. You know, I don't need a candy for that, but... Yeah, cotton. Well, the biggest buyer... Well, there's two big buyers, and we can look at that. They want to get support from what two countries? What two countries they want to get support from, Brandon? France and uh, Great Britain. Yeah, France and Great Britain. That's when they get support from. They buy a lot of their cotton. They're right in the middle of their industrial revolution. They have all these factories making cloth. They sell cloth from all over the place. And so the North's idea with the Anaconda plan is that they are just going to prevent them from getting any cotton out. They can't make any money. The cotton is just going to sit on the docks and, and rot and go to waste. And they don't have any money to pay their soldiers or the economy is just going to collapse. This is really smart. The guy that comes up with this plan He's the top general in the U.S. Army. His name is Winfield Scott. Where else have we talked about Winfield Scott? We've talked about him in two different places. Two different places. Was he the guy that like led the people over the Oregon Trail? No, nah, you're close. You're mixing your history up here. You just trumped history. And make up. Did he go to the wall? He said he's wrong. <laughs> so. uh, and, and, the, and the fact that he's saying like he doesn't know what actually happened. I was finished on how he fired that one. Uh, I thought you were making a bad joke. Yeah, that yeah. scares me. Shh. Now, we talked about Winfield Scott twice. The, the most recent time is that he is one of the top generals in the Mexican War. Oh, yeah. He captures the capital of Mexico, Mexico City. He is also, and this is what Brandon was talking about, um, he is also the, the general in charge of leading the Cherokee along the Trail of Tears. Oh. He actually runs for president unsuccessfully, but at this time, he's I mean, super old. Like, the Trail of Tears was back in the 30s and 40s in the Mexican War, and so, like, he's super old. And so this is his big, I mean, it's going to work, but this is his big contribution. He is not going to lead troops into battle because he is so old and so fat they can't even get on his own horse. And you need to, like, Aww. officers. <laughs> I feel sorry for him. Oh, he's an old man. Oh, obesity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you feel that? Um, yeah, so he's not going to be able to lead troops into battle. And so that's going to be a problem because he would have, I mean, he was a great general during the Mexican War. And we're going to find out the Union suffers from lack of good leadership. They keep picking people that don't know what they're doing, really. I thought you said that they had good leadership. South, South. 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 Look at your notes, bullet points right there. Not that excellent leaders. All right, so again, the South Confederate goals and strategies, they want to secure slavery by becoming an independent country. You know, if, if the South would have won, we would have had an entirely different country. You would have had to have a passport to go to Florida, to Florida yeah, or to Kentucky. You know, how crazy would that be? That's like under us. That's true. No. <laughs> That's like under us. Stepping on hey Kentucky. Guys. <laughs> Alright, so we talked about that. They get support from them. They want to get support from Great Britain and France because they're the biggest uh, buying partners of their cotton. Uh, they, they trade with them quite a bit. What's interesting about Great Britain and France, they've already outlawed slavery. So they're trying to get two countries that don't like slavery to support them even though they so have they slavery. Sort of. 
They're going to fight a defensive war, and hope the North just gives up. They're going to spend too much money on equipment and lives. They're going to spend too many lives. And Americans up north are going to be like, why are we fighting this? This is ridiculous. You know, we, all these people shouldn't um, have been killed. And, you know, of course, the capital, if they can attack Washington, D.C., then awesome. Because you capture the capital, you capture their government, and then the whole country usually collapses. All right, this war is definitely Americans versus Americans. Just like when we watched the Fort Sumter scene yesterday, you had the teacher who, of West Point, the best artillerist, cannoneer in the United States, in Fort Sumter, and his best student, PGT Beauregard, was in charge of basically, with cannon, defeating Robert Anderson. He stabbed him right in the back. Sort of. So reasons for signing up, patriotism. Whether it's in the North and you're trying to preserve the Union, or you're in the South and you're saying, I'm defending my country, which is you know, Virginia or Mississippi. Loyalty, same idea. Fear, they're worried they're going to take our slaves. Or they're worried that the country's going to fall apart. Uh, excitement, a lot of people at the time, most, most Americans lived on small farms. We're moving towards factories and these big, or factories and big farms, but not yet. And so for most, for most men and women, definitely the, the guys, like you haven't really left your town ever. Like you, people, they don't go on vacation. They have too much to do to go on vacation. And so war was exciting for them. You have an entire generation of boys and young men that haven't seen a war. Like the Mexican War has been 20 years ago. They're too old. The soldiers are too old to remember that. And so these young guys are thinking war is exciting. All these old men tell these great tales of bravery and fighting, I want to be there too. You kind of see the same thing. Like the last major war we were in, where mo a large majority of the population was what war? Sure? Vietnam. The Vietnam. I mean, and those guys are in their 70s and 80s. And so the most popular video games you can play right now? War games. War games, like fighting games, because like young men and women don't really understand that, like the horrors of war, how awful it is. And it's the same thing. And they're also going to do it to impress the ladies. To say, look how good I look in my uniform. Wrong room. Oh. I know you or Jacob Hamilton. Yeah. 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 No. Well, no. Rips off face. Well, that's cool. Well, you better go down to the office. All right, thousands of soldiers are going to be between 14 and 18. Some of them are going to lie. You're going to have even like soldiers as young as 10 or 11 that are going to, again, they're excited. They want to go do it. I mean, you have some like a position in, in the military, a drummer boy, and they're going to be the super young kids. Uh, African Americans at first are not allowed to fight. Both sides later change that policy. The South is the last side to change that policy. When they're like, hey, we're out of people. We need to start figuring out convincing slaves to go and fight. It didn't work very well. Okay. Could they draft people in the Eventually they will. The, the, the actual draft starts during the Civil War. First the South does it, then the North does it. And just like in Vietnam and World War II, and every time the draft has been used, people don't like it. Because they're being forced to fight for their country. No, wow, that's such a bad thing. You've got to yeah. fight for your country. So that means you're free. Uh, both sides later changed that policy. Both sides thought the war would be very short. They're also very wrong. I mean, and so the very first troops that show up sign enlistment papers for three months. They think the war is going to be over in three months. And it's really one battle. They all think it's going to be one battle, and the war is over, and either there's going to be two countries, or they're going to be united. Which is crazy. I mean, that's even clear. Like, 90-day soldiers includes, like, boot camp going through the training. So they, they were, like, preparing for one battle, and that was it. Many of those soldiers come from small farms, like I mentioned. So, yeah. They even, like, sent soldiers, like, recruits away. We're all like, oh, we don't need that many soldiers. This is one battle and it's done. Is the north? It's really both. Both are at the, at the very beginning of the war. They're like, we don't need, no, this is going to be super simple. It's fine. Politics can't handle it, so let's just fight it out and we'll be done. America. Or Confederate. Uh, I guess it's still America. <laughs> all right, troop strength at the beginning of the war. Uh, the Yankees or the North or the Union have a lot more. 187,000? So I'm actually giving you the answers up here. So the Confederates are the rebels. <laughs> they have a lot less. They're better trained but poorly supplied. The North has a lot more, but they're 
better supplied but poorly trained. So you're going to find out which one is better. Wait, I'm just, yeah, I don't know what I'm feeling. I don't know what I'm feeling. You're feeling in the parentheses. I know what I write. Yeah. Well, the Confederates are the what? Yeah, but they're the rebels. That's what I want you to put. The rebels. Where is the Union, Brandon? What are you writing in that point? The Union, uh, untrained. Yeah. Yankees. 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 I knew that. Sorry. Do the Union's the North? Yes. What are these many different names for this? Yeah, just call yourself something. Union, North. All right, so we'll find out which one is better. This, okay, good. All right, troop strength. By the end of the war, the Confederates are going to use more than 900,000 soldiers, where the Union soldiers are going to use 2.1 million soldiers, including 200,000 African Americans. And 100,000 Latinos. Did you know it's like Spanish? Yeah, Hispanic people from Mexico, Central America. So, like, that doesn't get mentioned a whole lot. But there are lots of Hispanic soldiers that fought in the Civil War because we're going to focus really on the East Coast. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe we should try and this. North and South, they're fighting here on the East Coast, but they're just fighting in the West. They're fighting as far west as New Mexico and Arizona. And that's where you're going to see the Latinos fight. It's in the North. They don't do much fighting out there, because they're all panty and gold. And wearing their vice jeans. Aren't they like crazy? Yes. And they're, crazy. they're being crazy. All right, a soldier's life. Many soldiers kept journals and wrote of boredom. Whether it was just discomfort because their shoes didn't fit, because man, when I come in next Tuesday and wear my, they're called brogans, which I think I have a picture of, so I'll come back to this in a second. No, that's just a camp wipe. Um, the shoes are literally a piece of wood with pieces of leather sewn over them. They are the most uncomfortable shoes I've ever worn. And, you know, like worse, like Birkenstocks are comfortable. Are those those, yeah, hurt me. Birkenstocks, these are great. They're actually like designed to help your feet. They like they mold to your feet. Right. They like they're, they're like hard though. At first, but then they mold to your feet. Oh, Just don't get them wet. Why do you think those dark things are? Dark shocks. No. I'm just guessing. No. No, no I might not be that. You have Birkenstocks? We're going to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what kind do you have? Ooh, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, 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 Socks and no, Crocs and socks. I saw something on, I guess maybe it was Instagram or something, it was in the Apple Star about this guy who ran the, the, the mini half marathon in Crocs and sandals. And he was actually fast. Like, it's like Crocs next time your parents, like, like your kid Crocs asks you for these new expensive shoes. Yeah, these new expensive running shoes. You can just show them this picture. And it was this kid that was like, you know, flat out flying. Crocs, Crocs and sandals. And sandals. Yeah. It was awful. I thought socks All right. Uh, so I need to go back. There you go. Okay. So many soldiers kept journals and wrote out of, bore out of boredom. I mean, it was like a hurry up and wait attitude. You hurried up and then you just stood there until they told you something else to do. So they're, they're discovered. They get sick. If you've never left your town, you've never been to a big city, you're not immune to a lot of the diseases that, that big city people, like New York City, Philadelphia, they, they're immune. They've gotten you know sick as a kid, and now they're fine. Well, you, from a small town in Indiana, you're going to probably get sick. And, and more soldiers are going to die from disease than there are actual bullets. Um, so if I go to New York, I'll get sick? Could be. Uh, they're going to be scared, and they're just going to talk about you know camp life. So yeah, those brogans are awful. One out of 11 Union and one out of eight Confederates go AWOL during the war. What does AWOL mean? Like freaking crazy. Cuckoo, no. cuckoo, cuckoo. Are they? Away without leave. Yeah, away oh. without leave. Well, I was wrong. Even though that's not one of the blanks, you should probably write that down. AWOL. What's it called? Away without leave. All right, so there's kind of normal camp life. It's very hurry up and wait. 
I mean, you really, you kind of get put into in a regiment of soldiers with people that don't know, that you don't know, from all over the country, and you really become best friends with them. Hey, but what? Does that mean away without leaving? Yeah, like the, the military doesn't say that you can leave. Like the military, when you join the military, even today, they they run your life. They tell you when to get up. They tell you when to eat. They tell you when you can go, you know, so to the store. Yeah, which is illegal, and you can get shot for that. So, and that's the even now. Yeah. Oh, they all did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one out of eleven Union soldiers, one out of eight Confederate soldiers would do that. They just left. Yeah, it was a big problem. So right now, like, there was a guy that was sent to death. Shot. It happens. What was that guy's name? Bergdahl. That he was in Afghanistan, and he just he just walked out of his base, and he tried to basically like like join not ISIS, but like join like the Afghani society. And I don't think they've shot him, but he's, he's, in, he's in prison. No, I understand that it. one, but like, what if you just left like with no intention of abusing any of the information you got from there? Just doesn't like, matter. Like you, you, you sign a piece of paper that says you're going. The military is going to tell you everything you're going to do, and if you leave, then there are severe repercussions. Yeah, that's I mean they, they don't want other people just like leaving. They they don't want to take it seriously, so like you know, they know oh that's a harsh punishment. So those soldiers, even then, those soldiers that left went AWOL, like that was that's a big risk. Especially in the South. There's this great movie called Blue Mountain. That's what it's called. I mean, it's, it's a pretty recent movie, but it's about this Confederate soldier at the end of the war. It's like, you know, I've, I've seen too many people get, too many of my friends get killed, and I just want to go home. And, and it's his journey trying to get back to his house where these bounty hunters, basically, these patrols are going around trying to find Confederate soldiers who have gone to the wall. What? The bounty hunter people? Why don't they just kill like, their own? Yeah, like, why do we get do that? That's their job. They get paid. All right, so, so really, all soldiers did was, you know, they very rarely saw a battle. We're going we're gonna to talk about a handful of battles when we talk about the Civil War. Most of the time, you were in doing drill. You were training over and over and over. So that during battle, when people are getting shot in the chest, Brandon, or uh, people are, are getting killed, and it's chaotic, and it's smoky from all the guns and the cannon, like, you know exactly what you need to do. Why did you say? You don't even have to think. Why did you just say when I when I people were getting shot in the chest, Brandon? Because you just said <laughs> earlier, like, hey buddy, you want to go get shot in the chest? You heard that? No, he was oh, gonna shoot you. Yikes! Well, you heard him say that, and you only yeah. were here. Of course. Yeah, thank you. Years. All right, both sides are gonna suffer heavy losses. You got six hundred twenty-five thousand soldiers that are killed during the war, all Americans, because the North and the South, the Confederates and the Yankees, the Rebels and the Yankees, they are all Americans. Even the Southerners still really feel like they are like the true sons of the revolution, American Revolution. Uh, and these heavy losses are because we're using, Americans are using old tactics compared to the new technology. The way you fought in battle, the bravest thing that you could possibly do was to line up shoulder to shoulder with your best friends and march into battle. And you also had to do this militarily because the guns were so inaccurate. And, and my gun that I'll bring in is that it's inaccurate. It's a smooth bore. Like a bullet bounces around inside the barrel until it leaves, and then it just slightly goes off one way or the other way. And I'll talk about it in a second when I pull these pictures up. But the so to actually like win a battle, you had to throw a wall of lead, and that's why you needed to line up shoulder to shoulder. So you throw a wall of lead at the enemy, and they throw a wall of lead at you. And then hopefully that you have more troops that you have lucked out and you hit more of them than they have hit of you. That's so sad though. Like, I dropped too much for this. That's why they moved on the train. You make and you wouldn't have joined the army in the first place. It's hard if... Yeah, basically. Um, so that was a big deal. Like that, it's hard to understand. Like in 2017, it's hard to understand why would they just wear, like, I mean, one of my uniforms is like a bright red uniform. They did not want to hide. That was, that was being, you were a coward. Um, you didn't want to hide, and so you would wear I'd rather be a coward than dead. Yeah, me too. They, they wouldn't. Like I said, you don't necessarily have to understand, but this is their thought process. They want, I mean, they joined the army to, to 
win you know, the war for their country and be patriotic. Um, and so this was the way to do it. It was called Napo Napoleonic tactics. Well, the problem with that, the dictator of France. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Great. Um, well, the problem with this is that we have brand new technology. We have rifled barrels. And so the picture here is the, the barrels split in two. And you can see the rifles in it. And I'll talk about this on Tuesday when I'm dressed up. But if, just like a baseball, or not a baseball, a football, when you have a football and you know you throw, a quarterback throws it, it spirals and it goes exactly where the, the quarterback wants it to go. Imagine throwing that like sideways and just going. It's not going to go. It's not going to go where you want. So imagine throwing a bunch of footballs at another side, like you're playing Red Rover or something. How many of those footballs actually hit people? Well, depending on, you know, luck. Luck. Then, but these things, what happens is that when when the gunpowder ignites and it shoots the bullet out of the gun, it's so packedly tight in there that the bullet starts to spin, the grooves kind of it heats up and the bullet forms in this thing, especially since it looks like a little cone. Um, so that when it leaves the gun, it's going exactly where you want it to go. It's no, no longer like, oh, I'm gonna fire my gun. And like, they didn't even say ready, aim, fire. They said ready, present, fire. Because they're just like popping their gun out there and firing it. Now with these rifle barrels, like, if I'm pointing at somebody, I'm, you're gonna hit it. And so it's a big deal. Like they, they are not going to change their tactics until the very end of the war. And by that point, it's too late. Especially by the end of the war, you're going to see the first grenades. You're going to see the first Gatling gun, um, automatic weapons. Gatling gun. Yeah. Yeah. So like, crank Yeah. So that's why there's so many casualties because the tactics doesn't mesh with the technology very well. And medical facilities were horrible. They don't know about germs yet. You know, Shelby gets shot in the leg, Tristan gets shot in the arm, they go to the doctor, well they can't save it because the type of bullet was called a mini ball, and you'll see it on the next Tuesday when I come in dressed up. The mini ball, when it hits your bone, it shatters the bone. Today's bullets will kind of just bounce off the bone and it'll just like cut a piece of it off or something, but these mini balls, these bullets from the Civil War, will just shatter your bone. The doctor can't do anything. And so like, they go, <laughs> Shelby comes to the doctor, well, they're going to have to amputate her leg. And, and then, you know, Trista comes in right, you know, she's complaining about her arm, and, and so they, they say, okay, her bone shattered. And so they'll, they'll amputate her. No, and give some whiskey and probably, like, bite on a stick, basically. That's what will like happen. A and no, with a bone saw. And they'll they'll amputate oh. they'll amputate her arm without cleaning off the saw from Shelby's. Ew. <laughs> and you'll actually see. I don't think I have pictures of. Maybe I do. I hope I do. Um, they have pictures of that when the doctor or you know one of the nurses is like, okay, here's Shelby's leg. They'll there are piles of limbs hanging out the medical tents because they're just okay. We can't have it in here. Let's just throw it out there. And so those would start to get diseased. And gross, yeah. So like, I, got shot right here? I mean, they're gonna solder the wound. They're just gonna take a big piece of hot metal and press it against your wound. Oh my god! That's what they do now. And now you're not dead. Um, but they're understaffed and they're under equipped. They are going to learn in the Civil War that hey, you shouldn't do that. You should wash your hands. You shouldn't spread like these things. I mean, the germs are microscopic, so they're just figuring this stuff out. By the end of the war, they're doing a better job. But again, it's too late for Shelby and Tristan. So there you go. There, so we can think of a rifle or a handgun barrel. It has rifling in it, whereas a shotgun is smooth inside. It just kind of bangs around inside until if it, if it comes off the right side of the barrel, it's going to go slightly to the left. Left side of the barrel is going to go slightly to the right. And you're just lucky if you hit something. All right, war on land and sea. April 1861, Lincoln orders a blockade of all Confederate ports to cut supplies, which is a part of what plan? The uh, Anaconda. The Anaconda plan. Anaconda. What's the Union ship that's taken by Confederates and then clad or wrapped around with iron and renamed the CSS Virginia? Jackson? The Merrimack. The Merrimack. Where is that? Yeah, where are we down there? Oh, is it? Is that the battle between Ironclad? Yeah, we're on 458. We're in lesson two. I know, but where are we at on blanks? 
The one the first where one. Union ship taken by Confederates? The first one on the second page. With an M. We're on land and sea. Oh, I got nervous. Whatever. Say the first battle of Bull Run. I don't shoot. No, I know what I said. So, Mr. Jones, if I got shot right here, I just got my shit off, what would be going to hell? Wherever the bone has been shattered, that's where they cut. Then they cut your entire Oh yeah, last one. This last one for now. Um, well, this is actually the video, but it's going to start. What this battle is is awesome. Like before this, oh uh, no, it is. Like yes, people died, but this, this no, this battle is like if spaceships today were fighting like the war in Afghanistan. Like this is this is like so high tech. People don't know how to deal with it. Like we're about to see like wars fought with drones. It's basically the same thing because wooden these wooden ships. What they do is they take this, and here's a picture of it. They take this wooden ship, take off all the masts. Okay. I'm just gonna click on the picture. So this is the Merrimack. They they take the sides of the boat and they put big <laughs> sheets of iron all over it. Hey, slide down it. That hurts our bum. <laughs> and then what what powers this engine? What's powering this engine, Trevor? Steam. It's a steam engine, which is super dangerous and volatile. They can't completely control it. Those steam engines are gonna blow up. But this ship down in Virginia that the Confederates have taken and clad with iron just basically move right through the Union Army and just start blowing up the wooden ships with their cannons. But at the same time, the Union is also building their own ship, which they're going to call the Monitor, that looks completely different than this. But when the, the wooden ships, like the USS Minnesota, tries to fire on this ship, the cannonball just bounces off because it's clad with iron. So this is like an invincible ship that the Confederate has. No, it's not. That's what they said about the Confederate. See how that went? That wasn't invincible. It was unsinkable. That point. She got a point. But no, it is because the only the only reason that this ship doesn't exist anymore is that the Confederates lose control of the port that it's in, and they set it on fire from the inside. This thing destroys a large portion of the Union Navy. And, and they can't do anything about it. There is, that we'll talk about, you'll see in the clip tomorrow, the battle of the ironclads between the Merrimack and the Monitor. And, and it, it's what cool. it changes the Navy forever. Everybody else says, look, like looks at this ship and says, I need one of those. Because their ships are use, useless. A wooden ship against this, there's no contest. It's like shooting a squirt gun in a forest fire. How thick was the iron? Oh, I have a picture. Like Bye guys, what? How thick was the iron on? Uh, I'll look that up. We don't know if Tom would have to. Don't forget to stop the show. Oh, that's what I'm doing right now. I remember. Okay.